Red Shore three weeks ago. In thunder, lightning, or in rain. When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, there will end the set of sun. Where the plate? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. I come, Grey Malkin. Paddock calls. Anon. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. The revolt, the new estate. Tis this sergeant, like good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend. Saints the king the knowledge of the royal, else thou could leave it. Doubtful. It stood as two stout swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. But brave Macbeth, well she deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with her brandished steel which smoked with bloody execution. Like Valor's minion carved out her passage till she faced the slain, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to her till she unseamed him from the nave to the chaps and fixed his head upon our battlement. Sally and cousin, worthy gentlemen. Mark him with Scotland, Mark. No sooner justice had Valor arm compelled these skipping cairns to trust their heels, but the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men began a fresh assault. Dismayed not this, our captains, Macbeth and Banquo, as sparrows, eagles, the hare, the lion. For if I say sooth, I must report that they were as cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. But I am faint, my gashes cry for help. So well thy words become as thy wounds, they smack of honour above. Get him some surgeons. Who comes here? Uh, God save the king. Lord the fame of Ross. Whence come now, worthy thing? From Fife, great king. When the region banners cloud the sky and fan our people cold, Norway himself, with terrible numbers, was assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Fane of Cordo. Till then, the loner's bridegroom, lacked in proof, confronting his self-comparisons, curbing his lavish spirits, and to clue, victory fell on us. Great happiness. Huh. That's now, as we know, Norway's great <coughs> composition. Nor would we deign in burial of his men until he dispersed the same comedage with ten thousand dollars for our general use. Yeah. No more shall that fame of Cordo deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet the death. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, no the death hath won. Where have thou been, sister? Killing swine, sister, where thou? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap, and munched, and munched, and munched. Give me, quoth I, a right ye witch that right there on your cried. Her husband's to a leather one, master of the tide. But in a sieve, I'll sieve a sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do. I'll do, I'll do. I'll give thee a wind. Thou art kind. And I another. I myself have all the other, the very ports that blow, all the quarters that they know in shipman's cart. I will drain him, dry as hay. Sleep shall neither night nor day hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live a man forbid. With fellows, nine times nine. Shall he dwindle, peak or pine? Though his bark cannot be lost, though it can be tempered tossed, look what I have. Should he show me? Here I have a pilot's thumb, wrecked as homeward he did come. <laughs> So withered and so wild in their attire that looked not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are on it. <laughs> Live you, or are you all that thou may question? 
who seem to understand me by each at once their chappy finger laying upon their skinny lips. <laughs> and you should be women, yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak, if you can. What are you? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, fate of glass. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, vein of corn. All hail Macbeth, that shall be king thereafter. Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical, <coughs> or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and royal hope. Yet to me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grains will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. Hail! 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 Lesser than Macbeth, but greater. Not so happy yet, much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail, Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. <coughs> Sinnel's death I know I am fain of glance, but how of cordial? And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be cordial. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you. The earth hath bubbles as the water has in these rotten. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. What seemed corporal melted as breath into wind, would they have stayed? Not such things here as we do speak about. Or have we eaten on the insane roots that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. <laughs> you shall be king. <laughs> and they of called or two, but it not so. I did the self same tune of words. Ah, look who's here. Greetings, my dear. I have been sent here to give the royal master from thy royal master thanks. Only to herald thee into his sight, for your worthiest of the great honour, he hath bid thee from him to name thee Thane of Cordor, in which addition hail most worthy Thane. What? <coughs> Can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cordor lives a prosperous gentleman. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but put in a heavy burden to live that life which he deserves to lose. But with treason's capital, confess and prove have overthrown him. Glams and Thane of Cordor. The greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the Thane of Cordor to me promised no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you into the crowd besides the Thane of Cordor. But it is strange that oftentimes, to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles to betray us and leave the consequence. Cousin, a word I pray you. Two truths are told as a <coughs> happy prologue to the swelling act of the imperial theme. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath given me earnest of success commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cordor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature. Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise and nothing is but what is not. Look how our heart is wrapped. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stone. New honours stay upon her like our strange garments leave not to their mould but with the aid of use. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favour. My dull brain is wrought with things forgotten. Let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chance, and at all time the interim having weighed it, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends. Is execution done on Cordon? Are those in commission not yet returned? At least, they are not yet coming back. I have spoken with one that saw him die. 
and he did report that frankly he confessed his treasons and told your highest pardon and set forth a great repentance. Nothing in his life came out of leaving it. He died as one that is being studied in his death to throw away the thing he cared most about towards a careless trifle. There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman in which I built an absolute trust. Oh, worthiest cousin. The sins of my ingratitude even now is heavy on me. Thou art so far before that swiftest wing of recompenses, slow to overtake thee. Would thou have less deserved that both the proportion of thanks and payments might have been mine? All I've left to say is, more is thy due than all I can. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your highest part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they should in doing everything safe towards your love and honour. Welcome hither. I begin to plant thee, and will labour thee full of growing. Noble Banco, no less deserved. Let me unfold thee, hold thee close to my heart. Here if I grow, my harvest shall be your own, my plenteous joys. Son, kinsmen, thanes, know that we will establish our estate upon our Elvis, Malcolm, which will name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland, from hence to Inverness, and will find his closer to you. The rest is labour, which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy father. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down, or else I will leap, for in my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my deep and black desires. Let the eye wink at the hand, but let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. Well, true, worthy Banco, she is full so valiant, and in her commendations I am fed. It is a banquet to me. Come, let's after her, for her care is gone, but before to bid us welcome. It's a peerless kinsman. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by perfectest report they are more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanish. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it came missives from the king who all hailed me, Thane of Cordor by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with Hail King that shall be. This have I thought fit to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Glance thou art. And Cordor, and shalt be what thou hast promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest one. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, <coughs> without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, thou wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou have. Great glance, that which cries, thus must thou do if thou have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishes should be undone. Hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thy ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden ground which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. Is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say. Is not thy master with him, who were it so, would inform for preparation? So please you, it is true, our fame is coming. One of my men hath speed of him, who is almost dead for breath, hath scarce enough to make his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse. Croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make 
thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse, no compunctious visitings of nature shape my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come! Thick night! And pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, Hold! Hold! Great glance, worthy Cordor, and greater than both by you all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond the ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the east. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight, and when goes hence, tomorrow, as he purposes. <laughs> Never shall some that morrow see. Your face, my fame, is in a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time, bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and mastodon. We will speak further, only look up clear. The altar favour ever is clear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself to our gentle senses. This guest of summer, the temple haunting Margaret, does approve by his loved mansion mate that the heaven's breath smells willingly here. No jutty, frieze, buttress, nor coin advantage. But this bird hath made his pendant bed and procreant cradle where he most breeds and haunts, I have observed. The air is delicate. See, see, our honour hostess. Though the love that follows us is at times our trouble, which we still thank does not. Here I, I will bid to teach you how you shall be God ill for your pains and thank us for your trouble. All our service, in every point twice done, and then done double the poor, and single business to contend against those honours deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. Those of old and the late dignities heaped up to them. We rest your hand. Where is the thing of Cordo? Have we caused her at the heels and had a purpose to be her purveyor? But still, she rides well, and her great love, sharp as a spur, had hoped to have held before us. Noble and lady there, as we are your guests. Your servants ever have theirs themselves, and what is theirs in common to make their order at your highness' pleasure. Give me your hand. Conduct me to my house. We love her, and shall continue our graces towards her. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his deceased success, that but this blow might be the be all and the end all. Here but here upon this bank and shoal of time we'd jump the life to come. But in these cases we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instruction, which being taught return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides this, Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his angels will plead, trumpet-tongued, 
against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked newborn babe striving the blast, or heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless carriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sight of my intent, only vaulting ambition, which overleaps itself and falls on the other. How now, what news? He hath almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? You know you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He has honoured me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now in newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk where you dressed yourself? Have it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so free? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou feared to be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? Would thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life and live a coward in thine own esteem, that I dare not wait upon I would like the poor cat in the attic? With thee peace! I dare do all that may become a man who dares do more is none. What beast was it that made you break this enterprise to me? When you dare do it, then you grow a man. To be more than what you were, you would be so much more than that. Nor time, nor place did then appear, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now doth unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, whilst it was smiling in my face, have plucked the nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this! If we should fail, we fail! But screw your courage to the sticking place and will not. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his hard day's journey soundly invite him? His two chamberlains will I with wine, and will say so convinced that memory the water of the brain shall be a few, and the receipt of reason to limbic only. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his Spongy officers who should bear the guilt of our great quell. Bring forth men children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have dumped? Who dares receive it, other? We shall make our griefs clamor and roar upon him. I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time we fairest show. The false face must hide what the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? Really, Sam, I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take this later, sir. Hold. Take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. Their candles are all out. Here, take me back to you. A heavy summons lies like bed upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Give me my soul. Who's there? A friend. What's this? Not yet at rest. The king's abed. He hath been in most unusual pleasure, and has sent forth great largesse to your offices. This gift he greets your wife withal, by the name of most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, I will become the servant of defect, which else should free have brought. All's well. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet when we can entreat and out to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would rather time. 
At your kind pleasure. If you shall cleave to my consent when it is, it shall make honour for me. So, I lose none in seeking to augment it. <coughs> I still keep my bosom franchised and my allegiance clear. <coughs> I shall be counselled. Good repose the while. Thanks. I like to you. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not, fatal vision, as sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? I see thee still, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. My eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee yet, and on thy blade and dungeon gaps of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is this bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now, o'er oh, the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf who howls his watch. Thus, with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou, sure and firm set earth, Hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones break my whereabouts and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives, words to the heat of thee too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan. For it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. which gives the sternest good night. She is about it. The doors are open and the servanted grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drunk their possets, that death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. Who goes there? What ho? Alack! I am afraid they have waited and she's not done the attempt and not the deed confounds us. How can I leave their daggers for Listen, could he not resemble my father as he such? I have done it. My wife, I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry, did not you speak? When? Now, as I descended, I. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. As one did laugh in sleep and one cried murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and our men the other, as they had seen me with these hangman's hands. Listening their fear, I could not say our men when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce our men? I had most need of blessing, and our men stabbed in my throat. Shh, shh, shh. These deeds must not be thought of again. Ways so it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more, Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep, sleep that knits up the rebel's sleeve of care, the death of each day's life, sore labours back, 
the balm in her mind's chief nourisher in life's feet. What do you mean? Still it cried, sleep no more. Glance hath murdered sleep, therefore Cordor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. My worthy fame, you do offend your noble strength. You think so great and sickly of such things. Go, get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring this dagger so they must lie there. Go, carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on to him, I dare not. In further purpose, give me the dagger then. Sleeping and the dead are but his pictures to the eye of childhood that fear the painted of devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. You are, and you do not know it. 
nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valour to act in safety. There's none but he whose being I do fear. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace, only for them, and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man, to make them kings, the seats of Banquo, kings, rather than so come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, Your Highness. Well then, have you considered of our speeches? Know that it was he in the times past who held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you in our last conference. Passed in probation how you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments who wrought with them and all things else that might to half a soul or to a notion praised, say thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours for ever? We are men, my liege. Aye, uh, in the catalogue ye go for men. Now, if you have a station in the file not in the worst rank of manhood, say it, and I will put this business in your bosom, whose execution takes your enemy off, grapples you to the heart and love of us, who wear our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my lord, and the vile blows and buffets of the world have been sent to that recklessness that I do spite the world. And I am other, so weary with disasters, took of fortune, that I may lay my life to the chance to mend it or be rid of it. Both of you know, Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. And though I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall, whom I myself struck down. Thence it is that I to your love, <coughs> masking this business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us to. Your spirit shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves. Acquaint yourselves with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on for it must be done tonight. And with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in this work. Fleance, his son, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll come to you straight, abide within. It is concluded. Banquo with thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Is Banquo gone from court? Aye, madam, but returns again tonight. Say to the king I would attend her leisure for a few words. Madam, I will. Lord's had. All spent where our desire is got without content. It is safer to be that which we destroy than in destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions make in using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think of. Things without all remedy should be without all regard. What's done is done. We've scorched the snake, not killed it. 
She'll close and be herself, was our poor malice from it in danger of her former tooth. But let the frame of things disjoint. Both the world suffer ere we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead whom we to gain our peace have sent to peace than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic, nor foreign levy. Nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle my lord. Sleek all your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. So shall I love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Bancroft. Present him eminence both with eye and tongue, and say to the wells that we must lave our honours in these flattering streams, and make our faces visit to our hearts, disguising what they are. We must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou must have Banco and his Leon's lips. If it in their nature's copies not, it her. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund. And the bat hath flown in his cloistered flight, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest chap, till thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye in pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, Cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. <clears throat> Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvellous at my works, but be thou still. Bad things the young make strong themselves by ill. So pretty, go with me. <coughs> Give us a light there, sir. <coughs> then, tis he. The others that are within the note of expectation are already in the court. These horses go about. Almost a mile. He does usually, so all men do, from hence the palace gate make it their walk. A light, a light. Tis him, stand to it. It'll be rain tonight. Let it come down. Treachery! Oh! Ah! Who did strike out the light? What's not the way? We have put one down, the sun is fled. We've lost the best part of our affair. <laughs> Let us away and say what we have done. <clears throat> you know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, a hearty welcome. Our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require a welcome. Pronounce it for me. To all our friends, for my heart speaks, they are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks. Both sides are even. Here I'll sit in the midst, be large in mirth. Anon we'll drink a measure the table round. Thanks to your majesty. <clears throat> There's blood on my face. Tis Bancor's then. It's better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? Aye, dead in the ditch with the throat coat that I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats, yet he's good that did the light for flames. If thou didst it, thou art the non-paré. My liege, Fleance has escaped. Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. Now I am cabined. Cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo safe. Aye, dead in the ditch where he lies with twenty trench gashes in his head, the least a death to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time shall venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. We'll hear ourselves again tomorrow. My liege. My royal lord, do not give the cheer. The feast is sold, it is not often vouched, while tis a making, tis given with welcome. 
Feed were best at home, from thence the source to meet is ceremony meeting were bare without it. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. Were the great person of our banquet present, who may we rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence lays blame upon his promise. May it please your highness, grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's a place reserved. Where? Here, ma'am. Which of you has done this? Done what, my lord? Thou canst not say I did it, never shake thy gory locks at me. My lord, rise. Her highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus and hath been from her youth. Pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought she will again be well feed, and regard her not. Man, I, and a bold one that dare look on that which might uphold the devil. Promise. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn down which you said led you to Duncan. This falls and starts impostors to true fear would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire authorized by her grandmother. Shame itself if you make such faces when all is done and put on a stool. Pretty, see them. Behold, look low. How say you? What care I if thou canst not? Speak to. If charnel houses are my graves, my son knows that we bury back. A monument shall be the moors of kites. <laughs> Quite unmanned in folly. If I stand here, I saw him. Himself. The time has been that when the brains were out, the man would die and there an end. But now they rise again with the twenty mortal murders on their crown and push us from our stalls. This is more strange than such a murder is. I would fain your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a, a strange affliction which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all. I drink to the general joy of the whole table and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss, would you were here. To all and him we thirst and all to all. Duties and the pledge. <laughs> Avaunt and quit my sight, let the earl hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold, thou hast no speculation in those eyes that thou dost glare with. Think of this, good Piers, but as a thing of custom. It is nothing more, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare I dare approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the herb and tiger take any shape but that, and my firm nerves will never tremble. Or be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I have it then, for it has to be the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! Why so? Being gone, I am man again. Displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. <coughs> Can such things be? You make me strange, even to the disposition that I owe when I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lady? I pray you speak not. She grows worse and worse. Question enrages her at once. Good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and good health to Her Majesty. A kind good night to all. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How say you that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? You send to him. I hear it by the way, but I will send. There's not a one bit in his house I keep a servant feed. I will tomorrow, and betimes I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood stepped in so far, but should I wait no more? 
Returning words of tedious as go on. Strange things I have in heaven that will to hand which must be acted ere they will be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, will to sleep. My strange and self abuse is the initiate fear which wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Of heaven 
not digged in the dark. Finger of the strangled babe, which delivered by a draft, make the gruel thick and slap. Add there too a tiger's children for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open lots, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight house? What is you do? A deed without a name. I come to you by that to profess how I have come to know it. Answer me. Though palaces and pyramids do slope their heads to their foundation, even till destruction sicken, answer me what I ask you. Speak. Demand. Will answer. Say if thou would rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them. Let me see them. Blood from a sow's dead fowl. Grease that sweated from the murderer's jit. Throw into the flame. Come high or low, thyself by office deathly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought, hear his speech, but say thou naught. Macbeth! 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 Beware the dark! Beware the pain of fight! Dismiss me! Enough! Whatever thou art. Thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear aright. But one word more. He will not be commanded. Here's another, more potent than thy first. Macbeth! 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 Hello, three years I'd hear thee. Be bloody bold and resolute. Laugh to scorn. The power of man but none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make a sure and double sure and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king and wears upon its baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but, but speak not to it. Be lion-mettled and proud and take no care who chafes, who frets or where conspirers are. The great Macbeth shall not be vanquished until the great Vernon Woods are hide and the name hill shall come against her. Uh, that will never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree unfix his earthbound root? Sweet woodlands, good. Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Vernon rise, and our high placed Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, pay her breath to time and mortal custom. Yet, my heart throbs to know one thing. Will Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny this and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Why sits that cauldron and what noise is this? Show. 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 Show her eyes and grieve her heart. Come like shadows, no <laughs> big barks. Thou art too like the spirits of Banquo down, like crowned of Samine eyeballs. Horrible sight. Now I see it is true, for the blood bolted Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his. What? Is this so? Aye, all this is so. But why stand Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheery up her sprites and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air into a sound while you perform your antic round. That this great king may kindly say, we did our duties, headed welcome pay. Where are they? Gone. Let this pernicious hour stand I a curse <coughs> What is thy grace's will? Saw so you the weird sisters? No. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected 
be the air whereon they write and damned all those that curse them. I did hear a battering horse who was came by. Two or three, with news that Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Time now anticipates my dread exploits. Flighty purpose ne'er is overtook unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. And to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff are surprise. Seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool, this deed I'll do before the purpose call. Where are these gentlemen? Bring me where they are. What has he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, ma'am. He had none. This flight is madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. No, not. Whether it was for his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansions and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly. He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in the nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little is the wisdom when the flight so runs against all reason. Dearest cousin, I pray you, school yourself for, for your husband. He is noble, wise, and best knows the fix of the season. I must leave at once. Shall not be long, but I will be here again. Things at worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. <coughs> Blessing upon you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool. Should I stay much longer, it would be my displeasure and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. Let 
desolate shade, their wee past sad bosoms empty. There's a rather whole past of mortal smoke, and that good men bestride our downfall birth him. Each new moon, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face that resounds as it felt in Scotland, and yelled out like a syllable of dollar. But I believe I wait, what nobody and what I can redress. As I shall time to friend, I will. What you have spoken may be so perchance. chance. This tyrant whose sole name blisses our tongues was once thought honest. You had loved her, though. She had not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of her through me to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous, but Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recall an imperial charge. I should crave your pardon. That which from our thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Yet all things foul where the fowls of grace. Yet grace still looks so. I have lost my hopes. Chance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you to the triumph? Those precious notice, those strong knots of love, without leave taking. I pray you let my, let my just jealousies be of dishonest. But my note safe, please. You may be right, you just whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country. Great tyranny lie thy base to show, but I am not the willing that thou thinks. Be amongst offenders, I speak not in absolute theory. I think our country sinks beneath a yoke. It weep, it bleeds each day, and you gashes added to a wound. I think with all that would be hands uplifted in my right. Here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But when I shall stand upon thy tyrant's head and wear it upon my sword, my country shall have more vice than it had before, more suffer and more sundry ways by him I shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice, so crafted that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth shall seem as pure <coughs> as snow. The poor estate is such a man compared with my confiders arms. Not in the horrid legions of hell can come a devil more damned than Macbeth. I grant her, bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false smacking of every sin that has a name. There's no bottom none in my voluptuousness and my desire. These king becoming graces, justice, mercy, solitude, I have no relish of them. But abound in the division of each several crime acting in many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, or grow all universal peace, confound all unity on earth. Or oh, Scotland, Scotland, is such a one fit to govern? Fit, speak. fit to govern or not to live? A bloody tyrant lies scattered on the throne, and here lies the heir. Uh, Blasphemes and curses his breed. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honour. Devilish but met by many of these trains that sought to win me into her power, but modest wisdom plucks me from this over credulous haste. But God above, deal between thee and me. For even now I put myself into thy direction, and speak my own detraction. Here of draw all taints of blames are laid upon myself, strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, I'm scarcely recovered of what was mine own, and no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his foe in delight. No less than truth than life, my first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed, with I here approach old suit with ten thousand warlike men already at a point were setting forth. Now we're together, the chance of goodness be our warrant to quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, it is hard to reconcile. See your country, my country, yet I know not. My ever gentle cousin, welcome with her. 
I know him now, but God, the time is a move that makes us strangers. Sirs, amen. And Scotland, Mary did. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. Cannot be called our mothers, but our graves. Good men's lives expire before their flowers in their caps. Dying for it here stricken. Well, relation too nice yet too true. What's the newest grief? That of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker. And every minute seems a new one. How does my life? Why, well. And my children? Well, too. The tyrant have not battled about their peace yet. No, they were at peace when I did leave them. Keep it not from me, let me have it. Do not let your ears despise my tongue forever, which they possess the most heaviest sound that I have ever heard. I guess I did. Your castle is surprised. Your wife a babes, savagely slaughtered. Merciful fashion. What man? Now pour your house upon your brows. Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers to the of our heart and bids it break. My children too. Your wife, your children, your servants, and all that could be found. And I must be from thence. Be comforted. Let us make his medicines of a great revenge and cure this deadly grief. He has no children. To all my pretty ones, did you say all? Or help kind? All! Speak it like a man. I must also fear like a man. I cannot but remember such things are most precious to me that heaven did look on and did nothing. Oh. All my chickens, all my pretty ones, in one fell swoop. Heaven rest them now. Be this. The whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart. Enrage it. I could play the woman with my eyes and brag it with my tongue. But lay thou this villain of Scotland. Set him within my sword, then, and if he escape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack. Is nothing but our leave, and the power above puts on the instruments. Receive what cheer you may, the night is long that never finds the day. Two nights I have watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last was? Since her majesty left the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, retrieve paper, write upon it, read it. And then return to bed, but all of this while in the most far sleep. A great perturbation in nature to receive at once the benefits of sleep and to the effects of washing. In this slumbery agitation, besides the actual performances, what if anything have you heard her say? That, sir, which I dare not report after her. You may to me, it just must mean she should. Not to you, nor to anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, here she is, this is her very guise. Observe her, stand close. How came she by that light? She has it by her continually. Tis her command. Her eyes? They are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? It is an accustomed action with her to see them thus washing her hands. I have seen her continue for a quarter of an hour. Yet it is a spot. Hark, she speaks. Out, down, spot, out, I say. One, two, wipe, and it's time to do it. Hell is murky fire. By a soldier and a fear, what need we fear? Who knows it when none may call our power to account? Yet we would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him. Do you mark that? Even if I had a wife, where is she now? Will these hands ne'er be clean? No more of that, Lord, no more of that. You mark with this starting. Go to, go to, you know what you should not. She has spoken what she should not, I am sure of it. Heaven knows what she has known. Oh, this is the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabian mumps me with this little hat. <laughs> what a sigh is there. Her heart is fully charged. I would not have the heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. 
Well, well, well. Pray God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. I have known those who have walked in their sleep to die holily in their beds. I'm sure. But on your night, girl, not so pale, I tell you again, Bancroft buried, he cannot. Even he so. cannot come out of his grave. To bed. To bed. There's, there's knocking at the gate. <coughs> come. Come, come, come. What's done cannot be undone. <coughs> bed. 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 Will she go now to bed? Directly. Unnatural deeds do breed on natural troubles. An infected mind to their death blows will discharge their secrets. More needs she the divine than the physician. God, God forgive us all. Keep eyes upon her, remove from her all means of annoyance, and look after her. Good night. My mind she has mated. I think, but I dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. Bring me no more reports, let them fly all. Till Vernon would remove to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, false things, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt or shake with fear. The devil damn thee, thou green face, and where got sound that goose look? There are ten thousand gifts, villain. Soldiers, go prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lily of a name. What soldiers patch? The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. Satan! I'm sick at heart when I do behold. Satan, I say! This push will chair me ever or unseat me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the sear, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age, as love, honour, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have. But in their stead, curses, Satan, I say! What is your gracious pleasure? How now, what news? Well, it's confirmed what you was reported. I'll fight to fill my bones, my flesh be hacked. Give me my armour. Uh, this is not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scour the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Give me my armour. Doctor, how does your patient? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick-coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet, oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Therein the patient must minister to themselves. Throw physic to the dogs, I'll none of it. Satan, send out. Doctor, the things fly from me. If thou couldst cast the water of my land, find out her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee to the very echo that should applaud again. <coughs> Rhubarb, senna, or purgative drug would scour these English hence. Hear thou then? I, my good lord, your royal preparation makes it here. Bring it after me. I will not be afraid of death or bane till Vernon Wood do come to Dunsinane. Were I from Dunsinane away and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here.
is safe. We doubt it nothing. The word of Ben is the force. Let every soldier hew down a bow and bend before him. Thereby we should shadow the numbers of our hosts and make discovery every thought of us. It shall be done. We learn no other that the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunson Aid, and will endure our sitting down before it. Tis her main hope. For where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given her the revolt. The time approaches that will with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Thoughts speculative, their unsure hopes relate. Thoughts cost do speculate. Towards which advance the war? Hang out our ballots on the outward wall. The cry is still they come. Our castle will laugh a siege to scorn. <laughs> what is that noise? It is the cry of women, my lord. I had almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. And my fell of hair at a dismal treatise would rouse and stir as a luck for it. I have supped full with horrors. Dianus, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The, the Queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow. A poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Thou canst to use thy tongue in a story printed. Gracious, my lord, I should report that which I say I saw but know not how to do it. Well, the same! As I stood watch on the hill, I looked out towards Bernard, and along me forth the wood began to move. Liar and slave! I will suffer your wrath if it be not so, but if you will see it in the three miles towards here, there at once a moving grove. If thy speech be so, from the next tree shalt thou hang a lion to a barren cleanly. If thy speech be sooth, I care not if thou dost as much for me. I pull in resolution, and you begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till Bernard Wood do come to Dunsinane, and now the wood comes towards Dunsinane. Arm, arm, and out! If this which she about his does appear, there's no flying hence nor tarrying here. I begin to be aweary of the sun, and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell! Come wind, come rack, at least we'll die with harness on our back! Now near enough, your leafy screams throw down to show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy of McDuff and I, shall take up what else you may do according to our order. Fare thee well. If we cannot be, be if we cannot fight, let us be beaten. They've tied me to a stake. I cannot fly, but bear like I must fight the course. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one am I to fear, or none. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on my own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better on them. Turn, Alarm. Turn! Of all men else I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my blade. Thou bloody willing that turns to give thee out. Ah! Thou losest labour. 
As easy mayst thou the entrenched air with thy keen sword impresses make me bleed. I bear a charm in life which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angels whom thou still hast served tell thee, Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Accursed be the tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man, and be these juggling fiends no more believed that palter with us in a double sense, that keep the word of promise to our ear, but break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield, thee coward, and like a rare monster's art, live to be the sure and gale of the world. Painted on a pole and under it here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground in young Malcolm's feet. Lay on, Macduff. Ah! Ah! I wish the friends we miss were safe arrived. Some must go off. So great a day as this is cheaply bought. Macduff is missing. And your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid his soldier's debt. He lived long enough until he was a man, but like a man, he died. God be with him. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend him. Here comes newer comfort. Hail, King, for so now thou art surrounded by the King and Terror. They have their salutation in their mind as much as I do. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland! We shall not spend a large expense of time before we become with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first ever Scotland in such an honour named. What's more to do which can be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends who fled the snares of watchful tyranny. Producing forth these cruel ministers of this dead butcher and her fiend like queen, who it is thought by self and violent hands took off her life. This and what needful else calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once and to each one who we invite to see us crowned at school. Hail, King, King of Scotland! Scotland. 